for the introduction. Uh, good morning. Well, I'll share my screen. I uh, hope you're fine today, guys, everybody. Thank you for coming to another webinar. I'm going to share today a, a first presentation. I want we'll talk about replenishment. That will be the topic today. Very interesting. Uh, so powerful uh, that you're going to like it, I'm pretty sure. Let me just see if I'm sharing properly my screen. Yeah. Okay, and uh, to begin and to give you the actual idea, let me just share my presentation. So this would be for us the, the actual uh, introduction to, so we can understand what the replenishing process is, basically. It's not difficult, let me just show you. It's just that there are so many tools that we need to start understanding where we are. So this is replenishment for um, the, 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 those areas that uh, we are going to start introducing, introducing uh, uh, purchasing new items, let's say. Then we, we start selling some of them, we'll sell some of them not. But, well, we have some complications because the, the items sometimes sell in one some stores and in others not, right? And, uh, well, in order to manage, uh, I don't know how many items you have, uh, uh, we understand. Okay, so let's just talk about this part. How do we work actually with all these different tools? I'm gonna to speak about the, the, the general idea, but here below, below all of this, of course, there are specific details that might apply to you. The first phase is the planning, okay? Uh, the idea is that we have tools to make budgets. If you take a look at the first column, sales and purchase budget and open to buy an assortment, okay? Uh, the idea is that we have some money to purchase, okay? Just to begin, we have the tool so you can, okay, more or less check the historical data, uh, how, how many purchases you have done, let's say, throughout the last year. And let's just make a budget for today, uh, for, for the, let's say, 2023, which will be 2022 historical data, the cost of you, all your investments, plus a factor that will be, let's say, the following year, month by month. That's what we do first in this first part. Then a, we need to as well a, work with your items a, in order to, to work with those that are new items and then work with what we call a life cycle management in this first column as well. What we do here, we use LS Retail to check the historical data of our items because we have plenty of different calculation processes, um, like the typical average, which is very popular um, and most used, by the way. And some of them will be the, this thing that we call stock levels, right? Uh, okay, I know that I want to have an item, minimum inventory, let's call it that way. If you are in the fashion industry, you might think of the white t-shirt, the black shoes. If you are in electronics, well, the black cell phone, right? If we are in supermarkets, we are talking about produce, if the fruits, vegetables, and these items will be always there, and we must have a, a, a bucket, and well, this could be easily um, stock levels, okay? So the life cycle management is just basically that business central tells you which actual calculation method you might be using if we calculate and we review that you have a trend, but you don't do it manually, of course, okay? So we detect the, the, the actual trend and well, that's part of, well, uh, of our planification. Second will be manual replenishment for those items that you actually will be purchasing for the first time or where you have well, as well, of course, some experience, okay? In your business, there are these items that, well, you always, a purchase that you always know that a, without those items, well, a, maybe your profit will will be lower and so forth. And the a, the, the, the idea is that we can actually just replenish with your experience to push items to your stores, to recall items, and as well to prepare a manual purchase order, transfer order, and something that we call a location, very manual, where you say, I want a 50% to this store, another 50% to the other store. Very manual, okay? For those items only that are new or those items where you actually have some experience and you know how they behave normally. So you always will be uh, knowing that maybe in the future, you might need to push some items from your main warehouse just in case to any other location where you're gonna be selling, okay? This is might not be only related to stores, 
We know that some of you might manage uh, online uh, sales uh, like uh, with Shopify, things like that. For those scenarios, we might just create uh, our virtual warehouse from where the Shopify or other uh, channels will take inventory. And well, this module is gonna help as well replenishing that warehouse, okay? Now, automatic replenishment means that at some point we are gonna detect some trends for some items, and then we are going to basically forecast, okay? And then the idea is that we, I'm gonna show you some of these, by the way, today, how they work, how then we did, how we, how then it's a configure, why not? Let's open an item card from scratch. And then we have basically for the automatic replenishment, a journal, a journal that actually will be run by you, by the user, who will be learning this and then the system is going to suggest you what, what, what to purchase and show you why it is calculating specific items and specific uh, quantities for specific locations very very particular this way okay okay so that would be the idea then we have the execution where we, we create purchase or transfer orders this means that we are going to require new inventory but as well we balance our inventory because some items will be sold more in one store than the other and then we can start transferring at the same time well it depends it depends of course because we might need to calculate a, 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 as well with the costing and time distance if you are going to be able to, to move items from one a store to other. And then we did, we are going to verify if that's possible, if that's good to take items from one a store to the other or better from the central warehouse, but we need to balance our items as well. That's quite advanced, by the way. And then in, in the end, monitoring, because we need to check as well the demand. If you're, you, 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 we have reports that we, we, we tell you, okay, that's fine. Your calculations might be fine, but we are out of stock for, so, for some items. Your capacity and stock coverage means that, well, basically, according to the size of your store, you want to handle some specific goals for the quantities of some items at some point and how a, 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 a by reviewing how many items you currently have if you are reaching the optimal level. That's the stock coverage. Plus, the vendor performance is a report that tells you if the actual vendor is delivering on time of, or, or is delaying some of the purchases, okay? That would be quite difficult for importing, but anyway, hey, we, we have the report and at least we can have some conversations with our a, a vendors who offer our services or verify maybe one week in advance that we are going to need some items because we know that we have a list with some vendors, okay, at least. And with the local vendors, it works really great. Now, a, this introduces to cost reduction, of course, and service quality, planning, forecasting, well, all this idea, okay, that's, that's why we want to implement them the automatic replenishment. So, well, some of the concepts that I have explained, if you want, please let me know. I can share, leave me your, your email here. I can share my my, uh, my presentation, right? My uh, the, the, the idea is how to work with automatic replenishment once you want to work with it. Let's say that we start today. Uh, we teach you how to start with some basic uh, uh, new items that you're gonna purchase. And as well, if you have historical data, we can import it and use it, okay? But they, generally speaking, at least if we have, uh, let's say three months, four months of historical data, that will be good to start optimal. Well, more in this case, uh, we want more data, yes. And one year will be super good, okay? Now, uh, automatic replenishment works uh, like a charm. It's not complicated, but we need, of course, some some uh, visuals, some reviews, and an additional training, right? How do we then replenish? We could purchase, the vendor can deliver directly to the store, and in the store we receive. The second method will be if you want to centralize for your a, a replenishing process, everything in your main warehouse, or maybe warehouse one or two, and then later we'll repl replenish the stores. And the last one will be sort of how centralized, but in the end, the cross-docking idea uh, comes when we don't really stock everything in our main warehouse, okay? We don't put away, we don't do, a, we don't use your shelf, we just receive it, count it, but send it with a transfer order directly to the store where it should belong, okay? And that's a cross-locking idea. It just helps us to work faster, but with just some, some uh, specific um, limitations, okay? We, don't, we really want to have items in our main warehouse. That would be the idea, okay? Now, 
<laughs> this is the last concept, the stock reduced distribution, is because, well, once we have items in our warehouses, in stores, and in the end, they are warehouses as well, well, we can replenish from one store to the other, and guess what? A business central or a less retail and working together can tell us if it's optimal to distribute from one store to the other, this will be only if you have multiple stores, okay? It's not, if you have a few, it's not gonna be a problem, but let's say you have five, like in this diagram or even more, yeah, it's super desirable to start doing the balancing of your inventory. With this in mind, let's just go to the, to the application. I'm going to finish this. and I'm, I'm going to open my replenishing, uh, um, my replenishing, uh, a, a, a tool so we can start working with this in business central. I'm going to show you then just the functionality. Okay, one second, please. Good. Let me activate everything behind the scene. Okay, it's done. Okay, business central as well. If you this, you're seeing this for the first time, I'm going to open just in a browser. Okay, no complications because this technology is basically connecting to one main server, so to speak, in, in the cloud in my case, or in this case, I'm actually using my local uh, server. So it's up to you how you want to work. But the idea with in the cloud technology uh, that will be working much better nowadays, you can connect with multiple tools and, and things like that. And with replenishing, it's uh, basically embedded. It's already there. You are going to have, if you work with LS Central, the module is already available. You won't need like any other specifications or, or additions and another software or, or, or new licenses, nothing like that. No, nothing complicated. It's, I'm talking about an out of the box a, a module that we have here. Okay. Let me see it's a little slow today. Maybe it's because I'm having a process running behind the scene. This always happens when I actually do demos or things like that. It's just a, an, an actual demo environment. Don't worry about this. This is a, it, this doesn't happen in a production environment, by the way. It's just not here. Okay, and when I think let's let me see. Okay, okay, okay. Stop. Okay, while it opens, I could actually continue sharing some of my presentation ideas. So we'll give some time to this. Okay, it's on. I think that I have a process behind the scene. Let me check once again. And I will just be doing this.
Good. Okay, sorry for this delay. Uh, this is my, my first window. I, I will be the, the, the person who will be taking a look at my company. I have the, like 10 products, so I'm sorry to speak. And of course, two main warehouses. So I'm talking about more or less mid-sized to large company, right? In, in, in this case, so you can see my uh, necessity of how many, well, how many processes I might have running behind the scenes. Let's talk about, well, what would be then the beginning of all of this? This is my main ALS Central Warehouse. And, and look at this. Uh, uh, I believe that I have received some messages regarding the uh, some exceptions. Uh, hey, you have some issues to see with your journals. Uh, thresholds means that I have issues because I have some capacities with the stores or to transfer items, okay? So I need to review that. And this decentral is, is going to give me some different messages. Right, just to begin, this is as well, okay. No out of stock situations, very good, okay. The main the main screen is basically to tell me what to do here. I currently have some transfer orders to pick and well, just KPI, general inventory movements that I would then just follow up, okay. I could actually add my own items, my preferred mm -hmm. items or my vendors. This actual Windows works for that where you could just manage your list and add any any vendor you, you want, any item in the other one. Well, just to give you what this screen is about, this is for the purchaser or replenisher, okay? I'm just adding my preferred vendors to have direct access. Then this actual a, a screen for me is going to tell me, a, for instance, a, do your purchase order, create a purchase order manually, right? It's the item import because you are going to be able to import items from websites, very good, okay, to your vendors. And as well, well, some other ideas that I have. So the process will be more or less like this. I'm, I have direct, uh, direct access to vendors, customer items, well, everything that I need, okay? And then in the top, I have some tools that are actually part of my daily work, like, a, for instance, automatic replenishing, a th just ideas, okay, out of stock. Okay, let's take a look at the out of stock items. A, let's do some adjustments for historical data, okay? Well, everything related, not really to purchase, but everything will be like managing how to work with actual inventory for all the stores. Where we do begin on a daily basis. I have a purchase and a transfer replenishment journal. What it does, these documents are actually going to create purchases and transfer orders for me. Basically, that will be the idea. And on a daily basis, what I do is just review basically these actual pages because they are will, will be offering actual data to me to review what is needed on a daily basis to purchase. How we work with the replenishment journal? Well, I have created multiple because I have, and, and what we do with you is uh, actually tell, just, just tell us what you will be needing to replenish. So I always replenish my main warehouse. Second, yes, I have another main warehouse, okay, warehouse number two, and I create a journal to replenish these first, okay? And then I all have others like, a, hey, let's receive some purchase orders in the supermarket, okay? So, so some of the main workflows that I told you that we normally use, okay? So we have the idea where we want to receive the, the items, basically. So now, if I just take a look, I, I'm currently in a supermarket where I as well have some sport items. So we could just design the one of these for a specific type of items, okay? That you decide, well, if you're gonna receive it in your warehouses or in your stores, okay? Just take that idea. And here I can see some items that were currently offered by the system with the actual suggested quantities to, that I need to purchase, basically. Okay, that would be the, the main idea. This is how then we begin, okay? Now, I wanna speak about these items because basically I have some components here that tell me average usage, manual estimate, like for like, stock levels, okay? Let's go with the basics. The idea here is that, for instance, I begin with some items, manual estimate, for instance. The first time I'm purchasing one of the items, well, let me see which uh, item would this would be. This would be a, a, a basketball, if I'm not mistaken, Wilson NBA, okay, fine. That item is currently 
uh, uh, here uh, suggested by, by Business Central. So I want to see a little bit behind the scene what is just going on with this. Okay, and I will go to retail items because we have one special uh, item card for all the users for your stores. Okay, uh, and this would be then a, what we call the by basically the retail item card. Some fields that are related to my operation in the stores. And here in the retail item is where I'm going to be able to see what are the configurations or what Business Central has for me to actually calculate the replenishing process. This, remember that this will be a, to begin a, a decision from my own experience. Like, okay, if I purchase a new item, why not to purchase just a few like 10 units or pieces or, well, any time according to the type of item, right? We want to like, let's say the first phase is to, well, make an introduction, introduction, show the item to the customer. This will be new brand, new whatever. You don't know how it's going to behave. That's the only thing that you need to know in this very special a part of the process. Now, it's just uh, having a few delays, okay, no problem. But I want to then check my item card for this actual item. That will be then my only process that I need to complete. And um, well, what it opens, the idea is that your, your replenishing would be beginning like without no historical data, okay? Uh, I'm gonna tell you this, uh, just in this case uh, for the my basketballs, if I, if I have, few items that are, are as well, uh, are similar to these and I have already sold them, I could easily copy historical data from one item to this one, okay? So I have to then in this case mention that that's normally what we do. And in this case, this will be a brand new type of item that I don't know anything about how it's, go about how it's going to behave in, in, in my region. And here I have my, uh, my item, the, the game ball, I would say, okay, I'm going to start estimating. This is, let me show you the replenishing control data. So you can see the overall fields that I use. Uh, I always begin taking a look at the manual estimate, okay? Uh, this is a, a, a sample, maybe this, uh, the, the, the items that the vendor gave me, and I will be having a reorder point of 10 units, just a few, uh, this could be even lower, right? And then the maximum inventory. It's just, well, a super easy type of process that we work with manual estimate, the lowest levels that you can actually have, so we don't purchase too much, okay? And then even though, well, at least just have a few small pieces. The thing with this type of, of initial process is that you need to be really monitoring these items because easily, if you start selling them, they, well, you could get be out of stock. Where to replenish it? To my main warehouse or to your store, okay? So it's easy decisions just to begin. I want to give you this idea of how easy it is to work with uh, this tool and my initial vendor that I actually use it. So the system, tells me every time we go below our order point, okay? And this is the stock levels I was talking about, but look at this. In the manual estimate, we have the available reorder levels. And then my estimation is that, let's say that I will be selling, let's say four units on a daily basis, okay? This was my just first estimate and the stock coverage means that how many days you at least will want to have Okay, so I would say, okay, if I have maximum inventory, want to have 20 and I more or less think that I will be selling four, okay, why not to say um, four, four, four times five? Well, that will be 20. That will be more or less give me the chance if I estimate this, okay, that I will be selling in the end a 20 per week, okay? Manual estimate is that I will be selling four every day and I want to have coverage for the following initial five days. Super easy to start using the functionality with this. So the only thing is that you're gonna need to work and to purchase on a weekly basis in my first estimation. Nothing else to say then I would be then having this specific requirement just to begin. And then the idea is that, well, uh, we don't actually do the configurations on an item level, okay? 
Uh, this item and the replenishing control data of data we are going to explore a little bit more. This is just the first the manual estimate, so you can see uh, why I had this requirement. But the actual process, how I replenish is by the actual group. Okay, we have different levels. This is the division code non food. I have well, food and non food items. We categorize your item this way. Give me your first level. This is for a supermarket, food or non food. Then we have the category, which is the second level for you to organize the things, the inventory uh, groups in your supermarket. All that is non food, well, look at these activities, audio, basketball, okay? Think of a supermarket. That's why I brought this example. And then um, uh, we have as well the, the, the food items, which could be easily, um, let me show you. Well, any type of food, basically, any type of food that you you, you might you might think, okay. And um, let me just show you some of them so you can get the idea. This is how we actually do the replenishing process, okay. I have my first level is that I have food or no food. Look at this, the first column. Then I have my a, a second category code where I have a beverages for food, a bread and rice. A, I have a dairy, okay, for food and non food. Well, I have clothing, cosmetics, right? Non food, I have sports like basketball, okay? And plenty of items will be part of these categories. And uh, behind the scene, by the way, I have subcategories or another sub level or subset whenever it talks about then the categories because behind or below the scene diary as well has a specific a, a, a product group, okay? That could be yogurt, milk, cheese, okay? Think of diary, okay? But those are below a second category. You could go as specific as you want. You can start replenishing division code, not that common. We normally do on the category level, okay? But if you want to be really specific behind the, 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 the scene, diary has other product groups, okay? That actually are going to help me to then subdivide the diary products like with milk, the joker, cheese, uh, what else, you right? And then as well, we have a part that's gonna be, it's just part of the actual, a specification. So I have my dairy products, like let's say, okay. And then here is what we I was talking about: replenishing data profile. Okay. So in combination with my manual estimation, I can actually mention that on the actual category or product group as well. I can then link. Let's take a look at the product groups that I have for dairy. Okay, I have here, for instance, butter, uh, what else, cheese, look at my titles here, okay, and for all of them, I can link a way of specific replenishing process, okay, so that will be the main idea how then we do it, okay, just to give you a, a general in the, for the introductory process, we strongly recommend to subdivide your, your, your group, maybe by department or by category and subcategory or product group or the way we call them, okay? Because we don't actually replenish on an actual a retail item card unless you have a super expensive item, okay? So let's continue. Once we have that simple idea, the, the, the process will be then followed by the actual review of why uh, then I am having just a suggestion, okay? In this case, 170 units. What is going on? We have we can have a lecture of those inventory levels that I was mentioning, okay, that I always want to have a small quantity. And look at this. I have plenty of different stores for this item and the system suggested my actual minimum level just to purchase, just to begin for the first time. So it's super easy just to begin. It's just an introductory part. And Business Central tells you for each location, purchase the minimum level, okay? But here we are gonna see stores, okay? Stores, remember that, because this is in the end what we want to have, okay? For then the purchase that I will be creating, they will be then uh, created for our main warehouse and transfer them to these stores, okay? But here is the actual main and basic requirement. And as well, if you want to see a little bit about the calculations, tells, yes, we have it. Don't worry. With this super easy example, let's just take a look at the requirement for any of my stores. 
you are going to have the explanation, we call them the calculation log lines. And then for every location, in this case, store one, store two, I can see some different lines. Hey, check the item. And if you have variants for all, our, for, our, for all of us, our colors, or if we I speak about a basketball, this could be for the balls, for, I don't know, uh, your favorite basketball team, Lakers. You have variants, colors, styles for the same items. In this case, well, that's that will be the case. Purchase my balls uh, or Lakers basketball because that's the one that I will be requiring, okay? And be on the variant level. So the idea is that, well, currently in the store number two, well, I currently don't have effective inventory because this is the first time I'm taking a look at this. What I want the stock cover is for the actual days that I were looking for, okay? So the system is currently suggesting 16 because I require four days of daily sales and cover each day with four units, okay? And then we have something that we call the forward sales factor. If you were wondering, for some items, if you have sold this item in the last year, okay, well, this could give me then, then a trend or, or a factor to review that past data and make that influence today's sales. But that's not the case. That's why I, I see the factor number one. And well, this is because this is a new item, nothing else to say, very easy. So the decision, this is the line I was looking for. Based on blah, 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 so quantity that I will be looking for, then by taking a look at the system and the reorder points, plus the blah, 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 a lot of then explanations we train you to understand all of this. What's the effective inventory? What's the calculated quantity needed? What's your reorder point, okay? Unless demand is 16. 16 is just my basic demand for my inventory level, okay? So that would be then the manual estimation, just reach a small, a basic a, a, a threshold, review that I always have just a few units because these new items I'm going to be purchasing, well, at most at every two weeks, let's call it that way. But you need to monitor these items a, a regularly. That would be the idea. And then here we give you this idea, this a calculation processes. Then we have another one that is more appealing, more interesting ones these items continue to sell. The problem, I'm going to speak about now the average users, okay? The problem is that for the first time when I, I had an item that actually has now average usage method, okay? The, the thing is that if I just take a look, uh, well, look at my effective inventory. I still need to purchase just a few, and the system is suggesting me to purchase 99, okay? Suggested quantity. Okay, just to give you a, 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 a review of what's going on. What is the actual average process? Well, once you start introducing your first items, you're gonna start noticing that amongst your, your, your stores, and this is super complicated, uh, the, the more stores or locations or sales channels you have, is much more complicated to monitor everything manually. The system does that for you because the system has detected that in the store one, I will be looking for four items. Through the time, and uh, I'm going to take a, a review of this average process. Well, through the time in the past, I only saw a few here, okay? So, well, let's just replenish just a few there. But I can see that in the store number five and seven, this is going to tell you once again, my store, look at them, okay? I have sold, a, 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 well, quite a, 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 just a, a good quantity of items that are actually... <coughs> then helping me then to, so I don't have to purchase what always is happening us happening to us. We purchase for all the locations all the time, at least to have the items there, but they are not actually indeed needed, okay? So then in order to start working with this, then uh, the idea is that the average process is going to help you, of course, to review the history, historical data. I'm gonna give you then a review of what it calculates, but in the end, it helps us a lot just to review where you have actually sold, okay? That will be, and the other look at these are just zero. I, if Even if I have physical inventory in those stores, well, I'm not gonna be purchasing more items or anything, okay? So that would be then the basic idea of the average level. Let the system 
tell you what to purchase and where because to review this by yourself manually and do let's say some uh, reviews calculations and so forth it's gonna take a while and imagine doing everything all of this in excel right you get to the point of course you can do that right uh, uh, but the thing is that is well you, you you end up with a lot of documents uh, you're gonna need of course a lot of help and hopefully you haven't done mistakes with your formulations okay so that's why then the system here is going to help us with that and i'm going to do check once again, the retail item card for this item, just to review what the actual average process has reviewed for me, okay? And the replenish control data, once again, for every item is the key for us to understand what happened, okay? Um, oh, this was not the average one, sorry. I can see manual estimate. Let me see where is the one that has the average method. Um, I believe it's one of this. Let me just take a look. And yeah, while we do actually that review, um, uh, I need to mention how then we move from a manual estimation to to the uh, uh, to average. The process would be actually uh, whenever we actually uh, 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 run the system calculations. Uh, the actual process will be done by, by LS Central, okay? LS Central is going to tell you which actual calculation method to use. Don't worry about it because as well, that's a very important decision. Of course, uh, uh, people has always told me, you know, hey, can I just work with that and just one person doing everything or I can just rely on the actual replenishing calculations or suggestion because it's so automated. And maybe in the future, right? Because currently LS Retail is working with artificial intelligence forecasting processes, and we have reviewed them and they are they are good, okay? But they are not perfect, okay? And, and that's the truth. I need to tell you this. Every time we run with implementation, we need to go with some up and downs. So yes, we do sometimes some mistakes, but in the end we stabilize then your levels of inventory to be effective and well control costing and inventory level Otherwise, super, super effective. Okay, I was talking about another item, Thailand basketball, that currently is using the average uh, methodology. And what happened here is that this actual item, if uh, I can review historical data, okay? Well, currently, I have some items where I have some inventory that is actually just sold. And this could be even reserved because within LS Retail, you can reserve items. We can tell to your customer, if you if you have the item or if it's on a purchase or coming, okay, that's good to know, demand. And then from here, we just have the option. Let's take a look at the history. And be, before even creating the purchase and replenishing everything, recalculate the quantities for these items, okay? We are selling in this very moment. Everything is, is uh, so to speak, moving, right? So I'm going to check the actual levels and average, well, all the items that I have sold, minus 14, minus 15, minus 55, in different locations, stores, replenished from one warehouse, okay? We never see the warehouse number one because we already know, and this is a pre-configuration we just do, that all of this store will be taking the items from the warehouse number one. Okay, so that's good. We know the sales. And what I want to do, just do here is use the average uh, method. And then I have some other ideas apart from the inventory or reorder points that we still can use. Let's say, okay, even though we use average, let's continue to use the reorder points for you to give you the certainty, okay? But I want to explain further activities. We have the replenishing sales profile and we have the store forward sales profile. What I'm doing with this is just that I can just have the system to actually review, well, as long, well, in the past, as many months as you, you have historical data, the more the better, of course. I would always love to have at least one year because we might be facing the seasonalities and things like that. But for this item that is kind of new, actually I introduced this item the same year after I do the manual calculations first, well, the system actually run and change it to average. 
but it's going to take a look at the actual last month uh, sales, then the actual, well, uh, six uh, months in the past that I have, you can see here, what is my date for the start date. But at the same time, it's going to give more weight for the last month, okay? And look at this, 25% give this average a, a methodology then as well some weight to give more, let's say, importance to the last few months, okay? And yes, still review the following six months, the, the, the past, sorry, the, 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 the last six months, but in the end, uh, this will be just having less weight. So if you sold this item a lot at uh, six months ago, well, just 12% of this average well process will be having well so still some influence okay but well double the, the if you tell me that you were selling this last item this a uh, 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 through the last month then i'm going to have more weight basically okay so that will be the the main average process okay and then this could be then managed to be included for all your items giving more weight okay to some specific recent or, or updated data more recently. And the store forward sales profile, it is because you can decide, okay, check the last year information only when you have it, one week back and one week forward. So I can then rely on my, on my historical data as well. And maybe through, through November and December, well, this might be super important to have, especially in November and December, because that is going to have a super big, important influence. So I always set this up for my months that, well, in the retail industry, we always have seasons, right? So we can use the average. I can tell you that we can use the average. Let's just review the historical data. But when we go to November and December, that's another story, okay? So I want to check better last year information that is going to help me with the peaks or with the valleys whenever everything like it is suddenly changes apart from only checking at the at the average historical data. Get the idea? It's going to help me like reacting faster. If you have that, then that's why we love it here when we do the replenishing process. It always then a if you want as well for all your items or categories, we can just generate yeah just an informational sales chart. Okay, a where let me see if I can generate it now. Show my inventory. Oh, look at this. I have, well, my inventory is actually even below the actual sales that I'm gonna need to have. Okay, minus 269. So I sold everything regarding this item. Or for the demo, I actually just sold without having the actual purchase. So it's time to immediately purchase, okay? And now if needed as well, you can filter and review your data by actual main warehouse or store number one or two. So you can be quite specific if you are curious, okay? And show them the actual a, a location, historical data, and then a, just continue doing all of this uh, without having, well, a, to show the actual charges, a, charts that we have, okay? And then another a, process. We have covered this main basic idea, review the historical data, do the average, but as well offer, offer this last a, a, a important period where is November, December, and help me actually doing this a, a, a review of these peaks of actual requirements that we're gonna have yes or yes, okay? And this is then how then we work with the purchase replenishment journal and with these two uh, normal usage of the actual uh, uh, replenishing method, okay? I'm gonna explain just the last one just without having to do an example. Like for like is those items that, well, uh, you don't really want to overcomplicate the things for some items, really. These could be very expensive items that you manage in your stores. I would mention, I don't know, jewelry or some electronics. Um, like for like is a process where, well, there this is preferred for hardware stores, uh, like uh, uh, where they have sometimes super expensive tools, electronics, super expensive computers, okay? Like for like is just whatever you have sold, just immediately purchase it, okay? Don't wait, don't wait for an estimation because the, normally we purchase on every two weeks, uh, on a period basis, every two weeks, three weeks, something like that. 
some items really are not going to work like that. If they are expensive and they, you need to have the item always there, like for like is the method because it reacts immediately. So whenever you have sold something, immediately just stock the item or purchase it once again, okay? Not widely used. I don't recommend this for all your items. Some, some people have this idea. They have asked me if they can start with that. You could start with that, but you're going to face a lot of different purchase orders that you're going to have every time you do a sales, okay? So let's take care of that. Otherwise, let's just with the basics, okay? Stock levels. And you already understand what is stock level, maximum, minimum, a estimation of how many you sell on a daily basis, the store coverage, how many, at least how many days you want to cover, let's say one week normally or two weeks at most, okay, for stock levels. Okay, so those are the actual methods. You have seen that we actually integrate a, a, or we set up our own items basically to then be replenished by the store, the, by the system. And just very basic ideas, but how then this work? Just to show you, well, we just, let's say uh, for the first time, because this was already done by me, I actually did it for the demo, but if you want to see, okay, how you run this for the first time or how it looks, well, let me just show you this. What I normally do is that I actually, and I know my items, I would love to replenish by item category, let's say, and I have the replenishing configuration, okay? So you can tell to the system, uh, just in, in input a description, what you will be replenishing. You can say how you want to replenish, purchase, transfer, or redistribution, okay? They are different, okay? Purchase is the initial a, a inbound transaction, but then you can require the system to redistribute everything, okay? That means take the item from whatever they are available, and if they are available, to then replenish the actual stores. And then what I do normally is, okay, whenever you have a vendors that actually you use to purchase always, it's just then replenish and create a purchase order for that vendor too, okay? But sometimes it's just by the item category, the, the thing that I I was explaining you how we organize internally, okay? Or maybe why not, once you already have some experience, you can actually group your stores. This is something that, that uh, we have for these companies that have, I don't know, 20, 30 stores or even more, and even e-commerce if you want to work with that, okay? So I have grouped my stores, okay, to then replenish then just one or two at the same time only, okay? And then as well, we can then have a group, a different group of stores to start replenishing. But the idea here that I just want to give you is that we just actually pre-configure what we want to replenish, okay? So this is the basic idea, okay? So once we understand, okay, what we want to replenish or like for other reviews, Let's just review the entire warehouse number one, okay? The entire warehouse number one is my first line. This is as well something that you could easily be doing, okay? But in this case, could be to review the entire warehouse. It doesn't matter. And review them and have the entire combination of different items in my supermarket from wine to, I can as well see here some, some clothing, okay? But this would be then having the entire review. Okay, for the entire company. And here you can see the total cost of how much you should you would be purchasing. Okay. And our estimation that if we sold these items, how much you will be selling. Okay. And the actual profit, if you run this, because in the end, we just generate according to the actual replenishing process you want to run, like in my case for the entire universe or just for the basketball items. Okay, you get the idea, right? About this uh, a, a process, right? And then once we just do that, okay, add items to journal will be the first thing that is going to give you the suggestions here and in the end create purchase order automatically. And it's going to create then this for us. If you, before creating those purchase orders and start sending to the vendors, okay? Remember, and I want to tell you this, this is going to create the purchase order automatically so you forget about having this 100, 200 purchase items 
okay? But we just need to do some configurations, okay? That we need to pay the price. Let's review our items. Let's review if they require an average metal already and things like that. But let me give you the estimation before I send the purchases. I will be creating four different purchase orders for four different vendors. In advance, I can see that, okay? And I can see the total investment that I would need to do, which is super good because then later I will use it for my budgets. And I'm going to show you that down with us, okay? And here, an unknown vendor. And this is what I'm talking about. Before doing anything, we would need to start configuring at least the vendor for every category or item. We strongly recommend to actually do that because I have six items that, yes, a, sorry, six lines that, yes, I, I will need the item, but I know which vendor. So I would then need to go back, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I could make the general configurations. But here is the overall review of what you will be then doing with this actual redistribution uh, uh, what I actually were looking for. And then you decide then in the end, when you create your purchase orders, actually you can still edit that those purchase orders created, okay? So that's something that I just could immediately do. It's not gonna be a problem. And then we just do it for, not for the entire universe because this can take a while. I'm gonna go with just uh, the pages that has just, the, just a few of them. Let me add the items to journal. This is for the first time. Okay, I'm going to tell Business Central to help me calculate that. Do not create the purchase order automatically. I want to review first the calculations and create the transfer orders if necessary. You can actually do so. It's not going to be a problem. Okay, and just let's just take a look at the review of the basketball items. So this is it, okay? This will be the normal process after we help you with the configurations. And look at this, well, with the actual cells, actually they have then just change a little to then have these items already, okay? You review then the calculations, you can review now the statistical data, if you have the budget, if you have the money, if these actual, actual items will be required, you can speak with your store managers and so forth, okay? You can still edit everything here, the quantities, you can change them at any given moment, okay? But well, in the end, in the end, we will, actually just work with this actual data. And then in the end, we just create the purchase orders, okay? Then this is just automated. That's the idea. Create all these purchase orders for me automatically with all the items required. One per vendor, that's normally what I do, okay? One per vendor, remember that. But you are, in the end can decide if you want to create multiple purchase orders, more than just one per vendor, maybe by item combination with vendor and item category and so forth, okay? And then, this is a purchase order created, uh, nothing special. Just let me show you at least a purchase order document if you are seeing this for the first time. By the way, this is a little bit advanced, okay? So I wasn't talking about the how to create a band or how to create a purchase order, okay? So we are just mentioning that I will be purchasing um, my actual uh, basketball to the actual vendor, which is the big fashion, okay, limited, and then is required 20, basically 20 units are required here, okay? Uh, for me, it will be very easy now to then continue with this. This was required to be purchased in the location code warehouse one, but as well, this could be actually that is sent it directly to the store where it was sold before, okay? So that will be the actual uh, main process just to begin. And this could be then just sent, let's say that sent to the vendor by email or print this order directly and call the vendor to come to our warehouses, deliver the actual requirement. Okay, and um, well, just to show you a preview, I don't have time to, to do an actual purchase order cycle, but it's good to know that it's going to create the purchase order for you. From here, you would need to call the vendor and do well your negotiations and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so it was just created and I can deliver then this order to the vendor, either if I just print it or via email. It already has all the data required. You just review, look at this, the direct unit cost that will be associated later with this purchase. This always needs to be reviewed because we don't know in the end what happened. Just send it, do the requirement, and then the vendor is going to tell you then, so to speak, well, the cost and other general 
uh, information that will be important, okay? Well, maybe that's quite expensive for a basketball, let's say at least well, this, okay? So this is then the final negotiation. But nothing else to say from this side, I'll run, I'm focusing today on the replenishing. Okay, so I want to talk about, now that you know the idea, more or less about the calculations, more or less about how the system actually works, let me just speak about a little bit about the configurations. And I want to take a look at the life cycle curve. Okay, I mentioned to you that you are going to be purchasing new items that you are going to estimate first manually. And then Business Central, we need to work with it to then understand how then we're going to be replenishing with the time. Okay, and for that, we, for my men's clothing, okay, eight weeks men clothing calculation for the summer that has already finished. Look at this, how the curve increased, but now it's decreasing because we are currently in the, in the winter. Okay, and this is so well, so metrics that I did on purpose. I'm not going to lie to you, just to be able to show you this. So I just said a lot through the pre previous months. That is not, nothing, nothing special, but let's say that that's real data, okay? Your items, especially if you are in this actual fashion industry, uh, but as well in supermarkets, you, you sell items that are, uh, the, this is some, some, or the fruits and things like that, okay? I started in my case with the stock levels, okay? And I have actually a, do this calculation by week. I told Business Central, review my historical data by week on a week basis, weekly basis, review eight different periods. You can add more if needed, okay? But what I want to do with this basic configuration for life cycle calculation, I told to review the first eight weeks and then I begun with the actual stock levels profile a, a configuration. So. You saw that I am actually requiring just a few uh, quantities, not too many, not too many, unless Business Central detects a trend. And that happened. Okay, the first two weeks, actually, I just had, if you take a look at this chart that are the actual sales, just a few were there. But in the third week, well, I'm seeing here that immediately somehow uh, everything triggered, okay, to start selling more. In that actual week, Business Central told me, hey, man, begin with the actual average method now, because I'm just checking that, well, something is happening here. We just really don't know. Uh, this is just few data, remember that, okay? That would be preferably after three actual months or even more. That would be super good when Business Central help us and it told us, change to average, change, change to average, because we are gonna, we're, go we're going through a trend and that happened actually. Yeah, but then actually after just a few periods, I actually decrease on purpose the sales and guess what business central did? Let's go back to stock levels because for any reason I, I can't work anymore with average method. I have an issue where your sales just decrease suddenly for any given reasons and business central always detected, once detected that is because well, we don't magically expect to sell more. Once the life cycle, you're going to be seeing this type of behavior for majority of your items. We call it the Gauss, the, the, the Gauss um, bell, if I'm mistaken, the statistical models. Majority of the items will have then a trend like this. I'm not saying that it's going to happen every year, okay? But most of the time, this is going to happen through a specific season, okay? Well, and then... That's exactly what happened. Help Business Central helped me to review the calculation method. I just calculated. And then according to that, that type of review will be only for this category, okay? So we then work for a, this. And the season filter as well, look at this, is for the summer, okay? And what happened with the season, and whenever we want to work with this, when you know that you have seasons for any specific type of item that helps a lot, Okay, to detect that and if with your help, okay, because what this actually is going to be doing is that we're going to start the life cycle, taking a review of the special actual configuration for the specific periods, okay, that we you want to take on account. So let's say the spring, the summer, the fall, typically, okay. So we then have this 
an additional review, not only the average, not only the calculations, but this is going to be seasonal. So we don't expect after the season to have you know, higher sales. So yes or yes, after some specific season, we just might go and know that, well, make Business Central know that, well, all the sales will be lower and go with the stock levels. And that's the life cycle curve. So this is how then it helps us to work. Okay, uh, and just a few uh, reviews. Uh, I as well know that I have a budget if you want to, to, to work with it. Um, let me just look at my view for you purchases, right? Because in the end, yes, we are replenishing, we will be checking replenishing, replenishing but we are purchasers. We want, we, and we need to take care of the money as well, okay? So what I want to do here is to do, do uh, open to buy or maybe comparison, just to give you the idea. Compare the reality against the budget. Because what I have done is created a budget to review last year's sales. Uh, here is a yeah, sales budget. And then to review with my purchase budget, okay? I know that I have sales, but I created or recreated historical data from last year to create a budget, okay? Let me just show you this. Uh, the thing is that I have the analysis or the comparison between the sales budget and purchase plan, okay? Which is this, and the actual purchase that were committed or in other words, already, a, a, a sent to vendors, okay? And then you can see then the difference and so forth, bond by bond. This is super good to have. This will be informational. This will, will never stop you to purchase whenever you need, okay? Otherwise you will be having like a bottleneck that is never advisable, okay? But the idea is well, at least monitor the differences, okay? Plus negative adjustments because you and your stores will be always have this type of adjustments or uh, whenever you have, well, they, uh, that happens. Uh, issues with the inventory basically because well the, the, it's stolen or for some of you the warranty was not okay whatever okay different negative adjustments and what we do with the type of adjustments so just to mention it um let me show you the inventory worksheets for your stores we have different activities regarding inventory that are interesting just to see we have just the counting okay uh, uh, we count your items in your in, in your stores we as well have labels that we can just create for your stores it's super important for replenishing as well okay we we need to, this is part of the labeling <laughs> process to mark <coughs> so your shelves or your items we have both Okay, I print them and then in order to correctly identify the item, okay, because yeah, you might have a super powerful engine to, to do all of this that, that I'm mentioning, but if the labels are not correct, well, you know what happens, okay? Negative adjustments and positive adjustments. Uh, they were a consumption for actual expiration date, damaged by somebody, or simply stolen. Just as an example, we have all this idea. We can as well prepare packs whenever we purchase, when we combine items in different kits, uh, just to check uh, 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 prices or do returns. How then do we work easily? Okay, just give me the, the, the let, let me give you a simple explanation. We just, let's say, do a, a stalling, okay, a stalling, a stalling uh, adjustment that we do immediately in your store. Okay, we just connect one of the scanners or a, if you have handcuffs, but preferably just a USB general scanners and start inputting your items. Okay, it's just gonna be super easy. Okay, and so we just include the items that we need just to basically adjust. Okay, just to mention that it, it's not specifically part of the replenishing process, but in the end it's part of the calculations, right? And then a, this, type of worksheets help us just to, uh, in an easy way in our stores, just open it. Everything is super prepared. So you just connect your actual scanner and input the quantities, beep, 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 or manually like I did with my mouse, okay? But everything is just prepared. We do this for you. So only the employee will that will be working in the store warehouse number one. We have another process where you can create this type of adjustments, but for an administrator that they can affect different stores or warehouses. But in the stores, since our people don't really are 
you know, computer people. Well, some of them, yes, but majority, they are learning, we need to train them, okay? We dedicate just for the actual store where they are working, the actual inventory adjustments, countings or labels, okay? Limited with permissions only to do that. And well, this is just the comparison talking about the budgets or the actual open to buy a, a, a report. Once again, I want to I want to then measure well the purchase that, that we see if it's going to give me the data that I was looking for. Okay, open to buy for every month. These are my actual purchases, my purchases that are already committed, okay, and the closing stock value, meaning that, sorry, the open to buy value is just how much money I still have available to purchase in this month, okay? And this is then on a monthly basis, okay? So I strongly recommend this. Uh, this is not difficult to do. This is the, once again, the budgets. If you want, we can actually go. At some point, I, I can just give a training about budgets, but it's not difficult to do. It's just, I have a purchase budget. I want to review the last year information, okay? And have a multiplication factor. It's just that, basically, okay? On a monthly basis, let's say, but if you want to be more precise, okay, we have different periods. The number of periods will be 12. In my case, I want the year analysis. And you can do this as well for different stores or different categories of items. It depends on how your purchasing team actually works to then start budgeting everything. And then we have as well the idea of the child and then master budget. So we can say that we are going to be organizing like a hierarchy of different budgets. Let's say one budget for store two, one budget, one budget for store one or three. And then in the end, we have a master budget. Okay, that's as well something that we have here. But this is an important thing. Review my historical information, create a budget automated for me, plus 0.1 or 10% factor okay so that's how then i actually did this being the central have this window for you to check the open to buy still or capital that you could and uh, you're going to be able to still invest for the different periods yeah okay that's the other tool that we have apart from the general explanation i'm focusing on tomorrow on the system right okay now some people and some of you want to act actually do some a other or have other necessities. Some of them will be the sales historical adjustments. Yes, we can do adjustments. That's not a problem if you know that, well, we need to then mention, hey, uh, from, from this specific store, for so, any given reason, uh, I still need to add that I other or uh, five, five more units, okay? This is just a manual adjustment what we just say. Okay, some items, uh, uh, actually, let's say milk, okay, in, in any given store, uh, or maybe from here, the idea, actually, why this works. Okay, I can say in the store number one or two, I, I want to adjust, oh, sorry for, for this, I still need the, the date, okay, and how many you want to adjust, because for any given reason, your actual sales need to be, so to speak, a, a adjusted whenever they are needed in the past, in the future. So you can actually, okay, verify that information and make your adjustments that Business Central will be reviewing. So it will be then reviewed and taken for the average calculation processes. But in reality, we don't do this manually most of the time. What we do from here is that we might use this tool to import and export information from other systems, whenever you have them, okay? Especially when we do new implementations, take this idea. If you can give us the item, you might have different item numbers, and that's going to be, uh, well, just a full review of your items. But if you can give us an item that you want uh, to, to then verify, at least make to make some tests to immediately work with this after the stabilization of whatever, okay, the, 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 you know that you have historical data, we just can import it, okay? That will be then the other type of requirement where we do not especially work from scratch everything, right? And that happens a lot with our customers. Maybe not for all the items, but at least we'll start working, okay? Then we have the replenish out of stock. 
If you want, I want to see a report independently of the calculation methods, independently of everything. I want to see which items that are selling and give me a report that tells me what is the unavailable quantity. Super important to have, right? Super, super important. Well, I have all data here from even the, the, the last year. I, this is just a demo environment. I haven't run this demo so often, okay? But this is going to tell me since when, okay? Uh, you have not replenished a specific item where there is demand, a number of days out. And this is only because you have demand, okay? Because you have a trend, and then when you have no physical or effective inventory, then it's just going to be measured by Business Central, okay? And this will be then the main report for out-of-stock items, another type of requirements, miscellaneous requirements, so to speak, just for you to understand uh, this basic idea of the that you can make adjustments, basically. Uh -huh. And then I have other type of constraints sometimes that happen, especially if you are importing or, or some vendors are like telling you, okay, I can't provide items. Uh, yeah, send me a purchase order is not going to be a problem, but hey, this vendor 44 Ele Eric's Electronics, okay? Uh, yes, I, I'm actually purchasing from this uh, actual warehouse, a, a vendor, but as well, they, they can tell me different type of restrictions. When they are super important to be taken on account, we do not just only sell a super big purchase order to any given vendor. Sometimes we need to actually take on account what will be the maximum weight they can send to me, the quantity they can send to me, the cost amount at most that I can actually send, okay? Or if you are more specific, okay, the profit amount, this means that, well, at some point, they, uh, you're going to have this uh, minimum purchase, okay? That's quite more advanced, but we can just do so. Um, try to, to, to reach level when uh, even the... the, the the, the transportation, if you are importing, okay, at least give me the minimum amount of purchase, okay, that is giving me still profit, otherwise don't purchase, okay? A cubage is level and weight is just, uh, you can configure your items to carry this information. As well, this might be quite complex, we do that with the time, but we still sometimes need it, okay? Like capacities or limits. The same happened for the transfer, Okay, if you have a specific, a, let's say, truck, internal truck to transfer items from one store to the other, okay, so I have a minimum value to make a transfer still a, a, a profitable, okay, don't send one item only, okay, wait, wait for more items to be sent, and the minimum value that I will be recommending, at least in my stores, to be sent from one place to the other. Okay, so that's some of the, what we call threshold rules. Widely used, yes, for, for advanced type of operations where they are actually needed, okay? And well, basically these are the, the threshold rules, some of the requirements for historical data and adjustments and things like that. Now, I was mentioning that in the very beginning, just I'm about to finish today. Please let me know if you have a, a questions. Meanwhile, I can just read them and try to explain whenever there are additional doubts, okay? The last will be then a, the topology, uh, where is hierarchies? I'm finishing today. No, no, not for this one, the topology for um, hierarchy relations, I believe. Second. Okay. Well, the last thing is that uh, we're going to work with hierarchies with you. Uh, because in the end, uh, uh, my stores are located in different regions, right? This is what we call assortment. I have stores in Europe, uh, in North of Europe, as well in Central Europe and Europe South, USA. Different countries, different stores. Okay. We need. In the end, we're going to ask you which stores you're going to be then replenishing from specific locations, okay? So if I talk about Europe, okay, I'm just mentioning here that I have a related 
okay, a, a hierarchy, okay, to replenish my food or need and all of this that you are seeing here, okay, from one region, okay. The actual items will be replenished from, you decide how you want to organize your geographical areas, right, from where you want to actually replenish your items, okay, and, and so forth. So if I talk about the, the uh, Iceland, yes, there will be replenished from Europe. And as well, if we talk about, I don't know, the, the USA and things like that, well, I have a warehouse in the North USA. So we don't replenish these stores from other geographical area other but the USA. Okay, that's another type of hierarchy. If you have multiple stores, okay, that will be mandatory to do. If we are talking about just a few of them, it's not going to be a problem, okay, because everything will be just replenished from the main warehouse that you have. So you get the idea, right? And that will be then basically the main concept of the replenishing process. We can help you actually to go uh, after three months, four months, whenever you want to implement this model of historical data to go with this type of functional that is going to help you a lot, right? And in the end, will help you with the automations that uh, with these tools is going to be super fast or at least decrease the errors, inventory levels. And we can share with you all well, this information and some uh, uh, brochures from our customers, case studies from LS Retail, that from our customers where we have implemented this, uh, so to speak, complex a, a, a operational module, right? And when we implement how then it has actually successful for you then to understand this, how reliable this module it, it, it actually is. And you can then see all these customer experiences, right? So that will be IDC questions for today. Thank you very much, all of you for your time. Hope to see you then in the following webinar for the actual replenishing and sorry for the LS retail industry webinars that I'm having through this month. So thank you very much and see you then next week. Thank you.